So, Jen uh, here. Mike, if you want to start off with uh, the COVID stuff. Yep. Um, well, and we're, we're, we're staying along that um, trajectory, which is great, uh, which is a lot, um, uh, a lot less cases. Um, you know, some computer models are showing a, a May potential May surge. We'll see whether or not um, that happens. If it is, it looks like it's going to be BA2, which uh, everybody who's vaccinated and um, and boosted will be prepared for. Sorry about the train. I don't know how bad that's coming across. Um, and um, uh, so that's good. Um, and, um, you know, we'll see whether or not it actually increases. Right now, we only have two cases in Waitley. Um, and similarly, I think, um, well, you know, you got, I'm not doing a Foothills report here, but um, no. I'll tell you anyway, Williamsburg's got about six, West Hampton's got three, and Goshen zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's where that is, and uh, no changes in guidelines um, at this point, and um, you know the booster question. Um, my stance on what I'm relaying to people on the um, uh, from what I'm hearing about the booster, uh, the fourth or, or shot or the second booster, as it's called, um, you know, is maybe premature for anybody over 50 unless you have specific health concerns so that's what i'm sharing with people um if you have a weakened immune system due to any for whatever reason um the the, the second booster the fourth shot might be advisable uh i personally am not going to get it but um uh, there's not mm -hmm. a need unless uh um, because um um the next variant might require another booster and how many yeah. boosters are you going to get in a year? Um, so yeah. we'll see. Uh, time will tell. But right now, things are going well. I wrote um, all the schools um, and reminded them that I'm available to help with people who are reporting at-home tests that don't go through the MAVEN system that are not reported as um, infectious disease. And so uh, um, I'm available to help answer questions. And we're going to put something up on the website. So that's everything I got to talk about. Great. So uh, is that um, COVID advisory go for people who are older, like <laughs> 50 and over um, uh, only uh, again, only if you've got a weakened immune system. So no, nothing like with just straight age, like 70, no, 60. No, no, not at this point. No, that second booster, and, and in, in fact, in Israel, they reported today that it had a very brief um, um, improvement on, on, on things. So there wasn't a whole lot of um, mm -hmm. efficacy behind a, um, a second booster, unless you've got, you know, again, as I've said several times, uh, a weakened immune system. So that's all the news mm -hmm. on COVID front, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, Mike. So yeah. we're, we got Keith uh, Bardwell here from the highway department and he's gonna talk about a couple of things. Um, Wadley's 250th and plans and how uh, we may um, be helpful for that. And also about the borings that are being done for uh, culvert, culvert replacement on Christian Lane. So Keith, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll start with the, with the 250th celebration and that aspect is that in speaking with Fran some time ago, I wanted to follow up with that. And that is a lot of the events that we're having are going to have, um, food products. And so the topic came up as far as getting the trailers from the solid waste district and Fran has told me a little bit about that, but some of the, you know, just to go over things real quick with you. Um, <clears throat> the beginning of the event is on June 17th. It's a Friday. And that is the car show at um, Tom's hot dog stand. So we don't need to worry about anything there. He'll handle that on his own like he normally does. But moving forward on to Saturday the 18th, um, we have a tractor parade in the morning, which there will be um, some food vendors set up for that. 
and I'll talk more about food vendors in a minute, but in regards to that, so that's one location we'd like to have trash receptacles of some type. And then later that evening, we have the polka that'll be taking place at the fire station and there'll be food, food there as well. Um, and then throughout, then definitely on Sunday, there's a fireman's muster at Hurley He Field. There'll be food products there. Moving forward on to Monday, the 20th, there'll be um, celebrations going on at the library. We'll probably, again, need the trailer there. So the rest of the week, I don't think we need anything until come the weekend, which would take us till um, Friday, the 24th, which is the chicken barbecue at the fire station. And then lastly, um, Saturday, the 25th, is the family day at Hurley. So all of these events are going to need um, food, have food vendors there and going to have to deal with the, with the trash. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I know that it's certainly our intent to keep the like food waste, organic stuff out of the mainstream and get that recycled. And that's where one of the th reasons I wanted to talk to you to see if someone, you know, representatives from the Board of Health or could maybe also work towards securing some volunteers to help oversee some of that stuff to make it more efficient. As far as the food vendors go, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I when in conversation with Fran, if we have a food vendor, for instance, a food truck that is licensed to operate in another community already and in, been inspected by their board of health, as long as they, when they come to Waitley, they come with the um, proper, you know, certificates to show that they have been inspected. Whereas if we wanted to have, um, I'll just make an example. If I wanted to bring a grill down and cook food myself, that would need to be inspected. Right. And mm -hmm. at the moment, I, there is nothing like that happening. All of the, uh, we're either going to have food trucks that are licensed in other communities already, or many of the locations, um, for instance, Tom's hot dog stand will be coming to the polka that night and he will be, he will be serving food at the polka. So he shouldn't need to be inspected because he has already been inspected through the town. If that, am I correct in that assumption? Yes, you're correct in all those. But as long as they have been inspected and have a permit from another town, you're okay. good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting back to the to the food side of it or the waste side of it, um, yeah. obviously it would be our intent to work with the um, the highway department to 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 go around and and collect the trash afterwards or in the case of like the the chicken barbecue the fire department would be um disposing the waste that you know afterwards right then and there but i, I just wanted to also find out a little bit more um about the trailers how many are there is it just one is it uh i don't think there's a trailer per se keith it's going to be on one of your trailers if you want to move it around it's the okay they're basically uh bins did i i think i sent you an email there's a board of health would you know obviously like to be able to use uh the um franklin county solid waste containers which are for food waste uh, paper and cardboard paper waste and uh, bottles and cans so they have nice signage they're all kind of um different colors so if uh you can get those um, you know, you can put them on anything you want to schlep them around if uh, that's where you want them or Low set them, set them any, any place. Oops. So let me, um, let me chime in, Fran. Um, so mm -hmm. um, that's a connection that you have and that's a connection that I have. Um, mm -hmm. Montserrat is um, very well um, connected with that group um, mm -hmm. um, through um, the Green River um, events. Um, in terms of um, retrieving containers, um, we can have that conversation with them, but um, it would be great um, to be able to separate um, trash and, and compost would be, would be a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. 
Um, and it's uh, um, also part of just community education on, on where and where this stuff goes and, and how it's all um, dealt with at the other end. Um, yeah. So um, tell me, uh, um, um, can I ask about the chicken barbecue? You mentioned that's at the fire department. That's going to be a food truck too? No. No, that that's... that the chicken barbecue is being put on by the firefighters association, okay. and we are having two seatings. First one is at five thirty, and the second one is at seven, and um, we're anticipating, at the most, somewhere around four hundred chick half chickens to be cooked. Um, so mm -hmm. it's going to be you know fairly large i guess it's fair to yeah. say um <laughs> and, and along with that you know for besides the chicken um while we haven't na nailed down the the menu exactly it's definitely going to consist of if if we can obtain corn it will be a ear of corn baked potato and a half chicken that'll be the primary menu mm -hmm. nice very nice yeah no, my mouth is watering already. We should have, uh, no, we should be able to set up and get enough containers for getting food waste separated, the, the paper plates and whatever, and uh, bottles and cans separated, which you can then bring down to the transfer station right away, pretty much. Um, well, we can check with um, Bear Path too, right? Uh, whether or not they would, how, how much of that they want. They may not want the meat. Um, well, but we separate the. Um, yeah, they don't. Vegetables. They don't want the meat, but we can probably contain it because we're getting uh, our food waste picked up weekly now. So, the that there's a oh, dumpster oh. there. Oh, um, should work. I didn't uh, know it was weekly. Wow, great. Well, we switched to weekly because we were getting a lot. So in well, the summer, June's going to be a busy week. <laughs> well, that weekend, the problem, Keith, is as Mike mentioned, there's a Green River Festival that happens that fall, the latter week, last weekend. So Correct. So, um, but we already put our dibs in. In fact, you should follow up with uh, Amy at the uh, uh, Solid Waste District so we can get yeah. the. The, the number of cans are, that you need for the okay and signage they have signage too yeah. um but we you know if we if you need some help with signage we can clearly do that too um but i think it's going to be a question of logistics just picking up the containers there is a 35 dollar deposit fee but you get that back you get that so. back um, what about, and uh, the other question that um, was brought up by Keith was uh, volunteers. Um, so I think we can get yeah. to work on that and, and have a yeah. crew ready to help out. Um, I could think of a, a few people already who would be happy to help. <laughs> Including somebody near and dear to you uh, <laughs> and, and somebody near and dear to our Board of Health, not yes. present at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, you. uh, Keith, you should tell us which events you, that would be more. Uh, okay. Which volunteer? Yeah, at, I mean, at the moment, the biggest ones that I would suggest that we um, look for the the volunteers will definitely be the chicken barbecue. Yeah. And probably the night of the polka. Um, Is that the although at the moment the polka the menu that Gary Clock from Tom's is going to have. As far as I know, it's just going to be um, kielbasa and hot dogs. Um, yeah. So well, it's <laughs> not going to be a ton of, you know, it's not going to be a high amount of food, but just offering a little bit on the side besides coming for a polka. Is there? Um, there will be definitely plastic cups dispo yeah. to be disposed of because um, there is going to be um, alcohol served. Uh, there will be um, soda there things of that nature. So there's going to be plastic water bottles. There'll be aluminum soda cans, that kind of thing too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cups, cans. How about, um, is there beer going to be beer? Yes. In beer. Cans? But at the mo at the moment, the intent is it's going to be all draft beer. So it'll be the plastic cups. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm responding to Beck right now. He's having trouble getting on, but I had a question too. Um, just checking in Keith about the, um Oops. the things i was wondering oh the library event who's doing how's, how's that food going to happen that i'll um 
needs to be still a little more finalizing there that night. Um, again, I'm not, if, it, if anything, it'll probably just be a food truck. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, someone who's, who's currently licensed and, and out doing that, um, mm -hmm. you know, the fellow who was at Sisters or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Gotcha. Uh, so um, Beck is having trouble getting in. She knows. Yeah, not... she says, I, I just told her, copy your copy your URL from the email you sent. Yeah, because that's, that's not, she may be thinking because we switched to the town account for this, these meetings. But, hmm. You sent yeah, that email when, today, Fran? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a revised agenda. And, yeah, uh, that's what, yeah. Yeah, so she should have that. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, it sounds all, it all sounds good. So the, the polka event is the Sunday, the 19th, and the barbecue event is the, the 24th. No, the, po the polka is Saturday, the 18th. 18th. Right. Okay. okay. And right. the... Barbecue, chicken barbecue is Friday the 24th. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got the dates all down, Fran, and so I can Thanks. share that uh, with you in the minutes. Um, uh, it says here that um, she's, she's waiting for you to let her in. She's in the uh, <laughs> oh, right. waiting room. Da. Let's see if there's anybody I forget. Oh, yeah. Susan's here, too. Sorry. Forgot the waiting room. <laughs> Mark, too. So. No problem, takes. There she is. Oh, is. sorry about it. Hey, folks. Sorry, guys. Um, hey, Beck. Sorry. How long have you been waiting? 20 minutes. Can I uh, summarize real quick where we are right now? Yeah. Of course. I Or not. I mean, yeah, just keep going. Um, uh, good. Well, it's important because Keith has been identifying no, no. the events coming up in June, um, and I'll send you all the dates and all the events. We've got a number of food um, trucks and food that's going to be part of the celebration, and we're going to be looking for volunteers. Uh, we want to be able to deal smartly with the trash and recycle and compost, um, mm -hmm. and I'll send more notes and information to you in the uh, in mm -hmm. the minutes from the meeting. Okay. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Hey, ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're working with the um, well with the committee. Amy. 250th committee and uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management Districts to get their um, uh, containers for food waste, all that separated and signage and stuff. So Keith will will work on the, getting the, the actual barrels. I think they're barrels down. So however many you need and also the volunteers Mike just mentioned, a couple of us right. <laughs> probably. Yep, yep. Free food, right? <laughs> Free food for the volunteers. Hey. All right. <laughs> okay. How are we doing on this topic? We're good? That's good, I think. You got anything anything else? Yeah, I, I think we're all set. I see my co-chairman, Susan, just came on board. I, I don't I think we're good, Susan. I don't know I'm, if you have anything. No, sorry, sorry, I'm late. I had another meeting, so. Well, okay. you got a lot of exciting plans. We're looking forward to it. It's a it's a Great celebration, 250 years, and uh, yeah. it was delayed, but we're happy to be having it happen. And you guys have been working hard on setting up a lot of stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, we we Thanks, are Julie. excited to finally be doing this. Mm -hmm. A long time in the making. It's mm -hmm. good. And better for it. <laughs> Is that cake real? <laughs> if you like eating cement. <laughs> no. Will there be a real version? at some point <laughs> during the week. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so um, so we, and we, the other part you missed is Mike just did a quick rundown on the COVID cases, which are all in Waitley only two, and the case counts are pretty low still. So we're hoping that it continues. And um, stay tuned. Uh, so That's the cool. next topic, since Keith is here, is uh, I put on the town culverts in the borings that are going on down there. It's a bit of a complicated situation. You guys who don't want to listen to this, you don't have to. I was just going to say, if you don't need me, then I'm going to go and make dinner. <laughs> go ahead. Enjoy. Thanks again thank for all your work. Yeah, yeah. thank you for yours. Mm -hmm. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Keith. So again. I'll be glad to explain the, the scenario we have at 
in regards to on Christian Lane. Um, the town is in the process of having a culvert that's between Route 5 and 10 and the fire station is in the design phase to be replaced. And one of the first requirements that needs to be done by engineering firms of these standards of today's standards is to do borings to determine the stability of the soils underneath. Um, when they first came in and wanted to drill, they were talking about going down 30 feet, which when I um, had looked, knowing our regulations we have in place that say no, um, no well over 30 feet can be done drilled without a permit. Um, the word the word well versus the word borings is mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I I honestly think that the the board of health should look this whole situation over again and, and incorporate the word borings in there also um, but just in general knowing that when they want when they came to me and said the soils were very poor and they needed to go deeper I said to them that they couldn't because if there's any potential contamination of the upper aquifer and the lower aquifer, um, you need to have a permit and you need to have an approved process of how you're going to seal the, the hole when, you, when you're all said and done. Um, the difference in this situation is versus a drinking well is there's a mechanism in place that you as the Board of Health or the Foothills District and the and the building inspector know about what's going on. And that is you need, if someone wants to put a well in, they've got to get a building, they have to go to the Board of Health to, for potable water and, and so forth. And there's a, people know about it. Whereas when it comes to um, a company coming in and or a property owner wanting to do some design work on their property, there's no mechanism that triggers anybody from knowing what's going on. And so a boring company can come in and drill without any permits, even though the well regulations say you need a permit. And I think this is something that the town of Waitley should look at. Now, when I had talked to these contractors, they, you know, they said, well, they never knew anything about it. <laughs> and had made comment about well they've done other they've done other borings nearby which obviously i took that to mean waitley and they've gone way down and they have not obtained any permits um so that's something that i feel the town needs to look at a little bit better to and you know in our case waitley we we know our upper aquifer is contaminated from the and we want to protect the lower aquifer However, the minute you go to a, a neighboring community, say to Conway or Deerfield, something like that, there is no regulations like this that, that are in place by the community. And a, and a boring company can go in and drill as deep down the bedrock and there's, no, there, there's just no permits needed. Whereas Waitley says you need a, for a well, you have to have a, a permit. And so taking it back to Christian Lane, um, I'm here today because I want to, they, we need to continue to move forward. They need to go deeper than 30 feet and they have provided uh, the method they want and Fran had contacted DEP. And so, um, I'm hoping that between the two scenario, you know, the, the, between DEP's comments and what we have from the, the well drilling company, we can come to a consensus and make sure that the borings that they need to come in and do in the near future, in the next few weeks, can be um, properly done, and that the when they're all said and done, that the that it can be sealed off, and there's no potential contamination into the lower aquifer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I'm at today. You know, I know uh, while I don't have an exact um, definition of what their what the outcome will be i was sort of wondering if you know we can 
have it where I can get like a provisional approval provided that we have an agreement between the contractor and DEP or something to that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I, I, just to fill in, I sent uh, an email around what the company that Keith is dealing with is mentioned as um, what they have to do to cap the, the two borings that have already taken place. These, there's going to be two new borings that are going to be the ones that go deeper. So we want to make sure that any borings keep the uh, um, contamination, if there are any, of the aquifer in check. So that requires some kind of capping. And that's why I, I talked to DEP and sent along what they would, what they recommend for capping and sealing borings. So, um, and, I, and I think I can screen share a little bit that one about, uh, no, maybe well, not. Oh. While you're doing that, Frank, can I ask um, if Mark, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there anything that you want to weigh in on this or you want to look at um, look at this mm -hmm. uh, closer if this <clears throat> is new stuff for you? I've never had to deal with this, um, so it's all new to me. Okay, well, all right. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. let's, let's give us a chance to check it out then. And mm -hmm. yeah, one of the reasons it's a uh, uh, unique some in some ways with Whaley is because Whaley had a severe <laughs> contamination of its uh, uh, wells in the eastern part of the town way back in the 80s, and thus adopted its own stricter regulations for uh, drilling. That's particularly well, private well drilling. And we updated those regs um, in 2012 or something like that, 2013. So, and as Keith mentioned, we talk about drills, wells, things like that. But I think borings may be in there once, but it's not um, really defined and not really taken into account. So we probably should look at those regs again. And um, so I think, the question, so the looking yeah. at the regs is the long-term project. What we want to do is not hold up the work that's trying right. to be done. What do we need to do in the near term? I think what they're suggesting, and I shared it a little bit later on an email that uh, Keith had forwarded to me from the company, they're proposing to uh, seal um, and then put a slurry in there, put in casings in the borings that have already taken place and then seal that with some kind of slurry thing and then uh, flush out you know, any old water and, and make sure it's clean water. So, which is pretty close to what DEP is recommending, but I, I would, uh, as long as you can get agreement, Keith, with between DEP and that that's okay, I think we're fine. With, I don't know about you, you guys, okay. uh, Becky and uh, Mike on this, Mark, but if it's pretty close to what DEP is, is recommending, and if if that's, if you can have them talk with DEP and get a, okay, we'd be happy with that provisional permit okay is that uh so let's say we we're going to vote on this provisionally um and uh with a stipulation that there's an agreement with dp and uh on this kind of capping all right so that's a motion you're making yeah or uh, if you all agree i think keith understands what we want here so what uh, you suggest you want to vote, we should make a motion and then have a vote right yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll just move then uh, that um, that we provisionally okay the the borings and the capping procedure the of the borings that have already taken place and um, uh, allow as long as we have uh, an agreement or the DEP agrees with that um, kind of capping. And, right, and like procedure going through it's a okay. lot <laughs> going well i forward. think we stop there right because i think we're yeah. gonna, the work we're going to do after that well you know mm -hmm. it's going to be separate we're just voting right now on this provisional yes. green light right mm -hmm. all right i'd like to second that um any any <laughs> good second um any more discussion on that hearing none okay so all in favor aye, aye. Okay. There you go, Keith. And I'll, I'll just I'll say this much before 
anything further does get done, I will communicate back to you, Fran, so mm -hmm. you can share with the board to let you know what's where yeah. it's at, okay? Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to know that everybody's on the same page with this. Um, and for future reference, we'll look at our regs again. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Well, Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you. See you. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Right. Okay. Bye. Um, let's see. Moving on. So we do have an agenda. Just to show that again in case. Um, so the borings was in the first um, um, uh, bullet, but do you want to um, move to Swamp yeah. Road so that we can yeah. attend sure. to our guests? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we can could do the other things. In okay. Start. Sure. Um, Mark, do you want to give us give us an update, not just on Swamp, but also on the 29 Laurel Mountain? And White Birch, yeah. And White Birch, yeah. Okay, so we're just dealing with them one at a time because they're all going to be rather complicated. <laughs> None of this has been, any of, any of this has been simple. Um, since Jen's here, we should probably do Swamp Road first. Okay. Um, and then I can go into, you know, Laura Mountain Road and the campground is kind of status quo. Um, I got an email today from um, Sandy, who's going to be running it just to know what they needed to do to open it up. They still haven't mm -hmm. done any of the work there yet. So the basement's still the same, et cetera. Um, okay. So that hasn't changed as far as I know. Um, Swamp Road Let's, work. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, we want to take them separately then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but, but White Birch is done. That's set aside. There's nothing that happened. Um, so, thank you. And so, what's happening at 60 Swamp, Mark? So, I stopped down. I think it was, was it Thursday? It's all one blur. Um, I stopped down Thursday to kind of see where the status of uh, the work is. Some of the works, the roof hasn't been leaking. The ceiling still needs to be done. Um, the kitchen floor had started to be done. But if you actually look at the tiles, She's been doing the tiles herself with uh, help from, I believe, Jen's family. Um, the tiles aren't lining up right, and there's gaps in between them. So they're going to need to be redone because there's no way to keep those clean if you have, you know, significant gaps in the um, in the tiles. So that's, you know, some of the stuff's been done. She's still in the process of getting stuff lined up um, or supposedly hasn't lined up. There's been, you know, she's been there from my understanding frequently um much to jen's probably dismay is you know it's almost daily i guess and you know jen needs to be there and it really doesn't give her an opportunity to go anywhere so what i had suggested to mrs reed is to give jen a list of when the contractors are going to come so she can kind of plan around it that way she's not trapped in her house um for lack of a better word <laughs> so the roof got done yep. the ceiling is not done Correct. Uh, the cellar, the floor still need to be redone. The cellar, I honestly didn't go, I didn't check that. I was just going to see, um, I've yeah. been getting calls from Mrs. Reed and Jen, and I just wanted to see what was going on Thursday. Uh, Mrs. Reed was complaining about the floor in the kitchen being wet for some reason. Um, I didn't <laughs> see any issues with it. It was just, you know, you, have, you guys need to be able to clean the floor. Um, mm -hmm. Jen has a regular mop bucket, and uh, I think it's uh, a mm -hmm. rope mop. Was. Uh -huh. Okay. I just bought one of the Swiffers. Okay. Yeah. At Mrs. Reed's request, so she wasn't using a regular mop. Mm -hmm. uh, not that that should be an issue. You should be able to clean your floor with a regular mop, but. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, I didn't go into the basement. The bathroom still needs, the caulking still needs to be redone. The hole that was by the Wow. Shower. The by the shower has been sealed and is a little bit smoother, but still needs to be painted, etc. Um, the glass window pane has been replaced, but the window is potentially rotting out, so that might need to be replaced. Mm. Well, okay. Now, this is, was all in the list we gave her, right? Yes. With some timelines and a checklist, quasi. And yeah. She's got one, it's apparently one item done or one in a couple in process. She um, got pretty much the electric area done, but there is a situation like she gave me an, a different light bulb saying it was the light bulb and I put it on and you can go in the bathroom to go to the bathroom. This is the one in the ceiling now, Mark. 
-hmm. and it flickers on and off. It goes lower, it goes brighter, it goes lower, it goes brighter. I tried putting another light bulb, it does the same thing. I think there's something wrong with the unit mm -hmm. itself, but according mm -hmm. to her, well, you should have told the electrician, which I had already told the electrician about that and the one on the wall. And she, mm -hmm. and he said, I don't have those units with me. We'd have, yeah, I'd have to come back for them another time. She was supposed to call, but according to her, that's never was said. <laughs> so okay so but we do have this list and we're just we're getting her uh doing the work so uh, the question is is it being done correctly and in a no, timely fashion she yeah. um stopped working with the contractor because the contractor couldn't get the supplies that she wanted him to have she wanted specifically linoleum and he could not get a get a hold of it in a timely manner. So she and him made the agreement they'd give back some money or something. Mm -hmm. And she then had me beg my boys to help her. And they were trying to do it. They're telling her it's not tight. It's not being close enough to the other one. And she's like, I'm not, I went to school for this. You don't know what you're talking about. So they pretty <laughs> much had to let her do what she wanted. So that's why the tiles are a little separated. He's like, I'm not going to argue with him. He I argue with her. And as of the list, I've actually emailed her myself asking her to give me time to availability. And they're going to have to start at 11 because of the medication I am on, you know, mm -hmm. and dates. And I still haven't gotten anything back because she was calling me on a daily. I went in for a procedure myself on Monday. Um, today, I had to recheck on my appointment uh, myself. And mm -hmm. You know, it's not looking too good for me. So I have to work with my meds that they got to give me, you know? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We recognize that. That's, uh, yeah, she has to accommodate your schedule. Um, yeah, and she just, I just, she, I had to literally call Mark and have Mark actually call her and say, it's okay to let her have, go to her appointments pretty much because she was telling me, no, I couldn't go. I had to cancel my appointments and stay home to do with this when she wants me to. No. And it would be, she would never give me a 24 hour notice. She'd call me at like eight o'clock. I'll be there in 10 minutes. And those mm -hmm. didn't show up until 10 o'clock anyway, but still, that's still no notice that somebody's coming, you know? And she's only hiring the backyard people now to do the work, mm -hmm. you know, handyman type things. Yeah. She's like, well, so-and-so said he's a genius and it's one of the campers. So <laughs> yeah. her, her, hus her, her husband's a genius. He knows how to fix everything. He's a perfect contractor, but he doesn't no. even have a license for it. So that doesn't make sense. No, yeah. this is an old story, Jen. Don't worry. We've heard this from her. Right. A I figured times. that. Um, and, you know, I'm trying, you know, Sandy still wants me to help her at the campgrounds. I will work with Sandy to help her because I have no problem with Sandy. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I just well, can't deal with Mrs. Reed up my butt all day and tell me I have to be somewhere all day long. <laughs> well, well, you know, part of our job and Mark's Mark's working on this is saying what what's up to um, code and what's not. So she's doing the work half-assed or having somebody else do it in a half-baked way. She's going to have to redo it. Yeah. Um, yeah. She she did. She's not going to like that, me. but. <laughs> I'm still fighting with the wood door. We still be fighting with the wood door. It started acting up again, off it, off and on. And which door? I'm sorry. Which place. door? The, my side door I go in and out of. Side the driveway. It's considered my front door to me. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's the main door. Yeah. Yep. It's the main um, door. Right, right, right. And there's I'm still plexiglass in, in that, that those window pieces. She never replaced that. She just put more caulking around it. Like on the door, when you can see out the hole, she just put some caulking there and said, it's all better. When it's nice weather, we'll replace all the windows and doors. But then she told me, well, it costs us too much money to replace the windows and doors. Mm -hmm. so. This is going to cost her money. Yeah, me. it's uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that it takes her forever to realize and this. We, we had we this. had fines going, so I don't know. Mark, is it time to uh, say okay yeah. if you don't get this done by? Next she week? had called and left a message on Monday. I I didn't call her back today because I had, honestly had too much to do. Um, mm -hmm. She also gave a man eviction notice to vacate for possession of the apartment. <laughs> Even though my rent and everything's paid, I think it's more retaliation in my eyes, you know? Yeah. And are you, and are you working with the housing court? I actually hired my attorney, as I've told Mark in the past, and I gave it the, uh, everything to him, and he's filing against her because it's okay. unlawful. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. out of our jurisdiction. That's out of yeah. our realm. But 
Um, we just want to make sure that you're you're taking care of yourself and your fan and, mm. and your loved ones. So, all yeah. right, well, Mark, you're um, you're um, overseeing this as best as possible, and and you're hearing one thing and seeing another. But um, yep. thank you for your tenacity and sticking with this mm. um, over mm. the years, um, and I appreciate that. I know it's um, it's hard um, with chronic issues like this. Mm. Um. I'm going to so, talk Jen. I'm going to talk with her tomorrow and I'll let you know with any updates I get. Yep. I Not asked enough. her just to email me everything because that way I have it in writing so she can't say I never said this or that. You know? Yeah, good idea. I'm tired. I'm tired of the phone calls and then her talk. I mean, she called me three, four, five times a day and I'm just, and then she forgets what she said. So it's not helping, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I was okay. going to ask you, you were saying what something else would be the next process after since the find you've already been finding her. So I'd like to know what that would be considered then. Yeah, so the, well, next step would, the next step would be housing court. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and you can let her know that more. Yeah. That this, this, this serious and awesome. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so stay tuned. Jen and then Mark, keep us posted on uh, the progress. On that. And do you have a list that you you can share with us? That list that yeah, uh, I, can. I can send you the letter that I sent her where I wrote everything out. Okay. Mm. Do you send there's, right? there's a couple of things that are on the list because I can't because the it wasn't the first part of the complaint. It's still stuff that's going to need to be fixed, such as like the cabinets in the in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, they're kind of in not kind of they're in disrepair and they need to be fixed um yeah, yeah. Uh, okay but i will get you guys a list yeah i like the tub draining and stuff um you know certain things you know and i understand that they started showing up afterwards but i had to still bring it to mark's attention because i tell her and she just tell, act, well that's not what i have to fix we I mean, mm -hmm. still gotta fix it you know so there is one other thing I wanted to bring to you guys' attention, which is really a Mark situation. Um, she's got people staying at the campgrounds. Yeah, I want to revisit the campground things because uh, we don't want to get it for a permit yet for that without having absolutely everything up to par. Yeah, with you've it. got two coverts that need to be fixed badly because you drive over them, your car is going to swing, go right in the holes, you know? Really? And That's uh, where her. Mm. Yeah. We had a problem with her Title V stuff there in the past and had her fixed pipes that were broken. She said they weren't broken. So, um, yes, that is pending. So, Mark, what's pending with White Birch? Again. All right. So, Sandy had emailed me today asking me um, basically what needs to be happen, what needs to be fixed at the campground. I said the basement issues need to be addressed. For example, the mud slash water entering via the hatch slash ramp, the crack in the back wall, you know, and mm -hmm. the moisture issues, um, mm -hmm. no permit mm -hmm. will be issued. Uh, and on any on-site campers owned by the campground will need to be inspected before opening or anyone using. And Sandy did tell me that supposedly, um, I didn't see it. That's the only reason I'm saying supposedly the pool was used last year. And I said, the pool shall not be used until inspected. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, if the pool is used, then I told her that the board would most likely revoke the permit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's last right. year, one of her helpers actually, uh, this the lady Tara that her her help that lady, she kept opening it up and letting people swim. And then she tried to blame it on Sandy when Sandy wasn't there. When Mrs. Reed's team that people were there, well, Sandy let her in, but Sandy wasn't actually in. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's where it runs it around in a circle, and she kept forcing me and Sandy to try to clean the pool to get it up and running. And we tried to tell her it needed to be a per professional pool person right. to do the job, you know? That's right. And it yeah, has to be somebody that's certified pool. Um, which and I nobody's call, taken so that pool. class. Nobody has taken that class that she, you need to be there at all times. And she keeps yep. mentioning it, but she's nobody's taken the class. So this is well, where it runs into the issue. You know, was, she was once certified to do this, but I, I think I bet it's lapsed. Yeah, so. it has. She told me because of COVID, it lapsed. She told me herself. So, yeah. So, Mark, uh, similar list. <laughs> yeah, so White Birch. I, I do plan on going through White Birch with a fine tooth comb. I'm going to look at all the trailers. I did tell um, mm -hmm. that nobody should be staying there until, you know, the campground's open. Um, and and with a permit. Yeah. Mark? 
I would think you guys should bring in the electrical inspector on that because there's a lot of uh, electrical pedestals that do not work on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, we had them inspected once by an elect. I don't know if it was an electrical I mean, inspector. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, it, it was the electrical years. inspector, I believe, but I'll follow up with them. It's um, it just a suggestion because uh, there's one that is according to one of us, uh, one of Sandy's friends that that's an electrical um, worker. He's uh, got a license, but it's, it's not even safe to put a tent at that site because the electrical is not grounded or something like that. Yeah. At that pedestal. Can, I, can, I, can I just uh, chime in real quick, Jenna? And I think, um, you know, we, we've covered Swamp Road, 60 Swamp Road, but I think what's challenging now is, you know, Mark is doing his inspections on White Birch. And I think what we want to do is, is, is focus on that. I think you're, you're in a difficult situation, clearly, um, you know, as both a tenant and someone who is working uh, for her as well. Um, I think that's challenging. I don't want to put you in a difficult or awkward position. So um, mm -hmm. let's rely on, on Mark right now for the mm -hmm. reports on what's happening on White Birch. I, I don't want to, I just don't want you to be in a, in a difficult um, position here. Um, mm -hmm. by, by reporting things that you're seeing or observing there. Um, Mark um, is, is our um, uh, health mm -hmm. director and I, and I think we need him to, um, to be reporting to us about what's happening at White Birch. Does okay. that make sense? And, I, I, and, don't, I just don't want you to be Yeah, it'd be better if Sandy, who is nominally the caretaker, right? There um, works with Mark on this. Yeah. At the moment. So, um, but the moment. again, I, I think we need a similar kind of list with that she yep. has to pick off. We did this once, no permit, nobody at the campground thing until we got all this done. And if she doesn't, you know, if she, without a permit, she doesn't open, period, right? We did yeah, this before, yeah. we may have to do it again. That makes so. sense. All right. Okay, so thank you everybody. Um, did we get a, uh, oh, 29 little amount, okay. Mark, Any, anything one else more? On, and well, before we go on, just want to be, make sure we wrap this up. Uh, we're all done now, Mark, with uh, 60 Swamp and Mark and uh, um, Jen, from your perspectives, everything, we've covered everything on 60 Swamp at this point? Yep. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your help with this. And then White Birch, Mark, we've covered everything on White Birch? Yes. Okay, very good. So now we want to move to 29 Laurel Martin. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I don't remember where I left off with you guys. So the bank, um, yeah, the disaster. All right. So just to refresh everybody, this is the property that had the heat turned off because the boiler slash heating system was unsafe and the company didn't want to do any of the work. Um, and the owner had died three years ago. So it's been in kind of a limbo state. Um, the bank technically owns it at this point. Um, I've been in contact with them trying to get them to fix it. They've been, um, I guess, I'm guessing stalling until they could sell it. So they did an auction at the end of the driveway and sold it to a gentleman. Um, really? And the, um, then I found out about that when I talked to Kevin Bushy, who's the occupant, no relation. Um, <laughs> spelled differently. Um, he told me about that. So I got in the email and I had contacted the new owner to let him know what was going on because he seemed to be walking into a situation that he had no idea about. Um, his plan was to buy the house, move in and et cetera. Well, there's somebody living there that has two horses, three cats. Um, the heat doesn't work. The septic system is a little wonky. According to the tenant, I haven't seen that or confirmed that. So I had emailed the new, the he hasn't taken possession yet. He still has to have a closing date. He contacted me today. He does plan on fixing everything because, you know, he ultimately he wants to move his family there. So um, he's going he's gonna to remove the tenant? Yeah. With the horses yeah, the tenant's the in the cats. process. Of, so that's part of the mm -hmm. debate that whether we want to condemn the property or not, um, because I think it is in a condition where it could be condemned. My only reason I haven't brought that up is I didn't want to displace the person that's living there because he has again horses mm -hmm. uh three cats and his girlfriend stays there periodically mm -hmm. um 
the heat still hasn't been fixed so there's no heat there's no hot water he does there is some heat let me correct that so in the kitchen there's a kitchen and then there's a little nook ish um dining area anyways there's a pellet stove there and he has space heaters and other areas you know so he has sufficient heat to live there and he's been using he has family members in the area not close but in the area so if he needs hot, you know showers and all that kind of stuff he can go and get, uh, get help that way but he's in the process of trying to find a place um so and then i talked with the new owner um he's planning on getting the septic inspected uh, i went let him know that the septic needed to be inspected even though it was sold by the bank and they may have not told him that let him know about the heating issues and all the stuff he's planning on doing he's been having contractors go over and kind of get quotes he doesn't own mm -hmm. the property yet so he can't do any of the repairs mm -hmm. obviously what's his the, name um where is it? ricky greenwald wiki ricky ricky okay by like richard so um but this is going to be an issue actually the that the bank will settle for him once he um, gets possession. That's his property. He has every right to take possession and just get, you know, to evict a tenant or ask the tenant to leave and the tenant has no recourse at that point. But- um, Well, there's a, board of health, there's a board of health complaint on it. So it could, it could be, hmm. if, the, if the tenant wanted to make it a big issue, he very easily could. Um, the, Hmm. Without an owner, without, I mean, currently there is no owner. The bank's the owner. And the. Right. Mm -hmm. When you buy a property, you inherit the tenant. And yeah. So they would have to go through the whole eviction process. And mm -hmm. I suggested to the homeowner that he work with the tenant and try to get him out. Um, mm -hmm. The tenant's been actively trying to move out. Um, mm -hmm. Is that true when a, when a property train, uh, change transfers ownership? Mm. that's the, the new owner that they, they 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 bought the property they didn't buy the tenant did they my yeah. sister bought a house once and they had a tenant that came with it there wasn't any choice they could do with it janet selling a property or janet's mm. conglomerate that she's works it and uh chesterfield is selling a property um with a tenant there and the tenant doesn't get unless they evict the tenant before they sell the property mm -hmm. the tenant still has rights Mm -hmm. oh. Well, but he may be seeing the writing on the wall and planning. Oh, yeah, he's, I, I honestly believe he's actively trying to find a place. Sure. Um, oh, with horses. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, the horses are also. Big, yeah, that's not really. Oh, the horses uh, are sold, you said? No, no, the horses are. Um, old, you said old. Old and injured. So oh, he's having old. a hard time trying to find a place for them. Uh -huh. um, and he has a lot. I mean, a lot of stuff on the property. Um, it'd be, <laughs> yeah. um, he sold, I think he sold an excavator. You know, there's a bunch of equipment on there that he's been selling off, trying to get rid of stuff. Um, yeah. He, so, I mean, obviously inherit. talking yeah. with the potential new owner, he obviously, his preference would be for us to condemn it and kick him out. And then that would put, you know, then that would technically then the landlord would be on the hook for um, paying for the hotel bills and um hmm. maybe the town yeah. well we've got you uh swimming in three pools of jello here <laughs> i'm so sorry um all of these are just um you know uh 60 swamp the, the campgrounds this situation um that's a lot there's yeah there's about i think there's five or six housing cases going on it's two in waitley two in west hampton and one in Williamsburg, um, which none well, we, of them are. We take priority over those other towns, don't we? Well, the All police right, haven't so... been called to any of yours yet. Besides, <laughs> yeah. One of the ones in West Hampton are bad. Oh, boy. Oh, sorry, but, uh, and, uh, all right. Those are the job sometimes. Housing is always, not, very rarely is housing any ever enjoyable. Okay. Anything else on Laurel Mountain? Brandon, if you're talking, I can't hear you. You're not muted. I don't know if maybe 
did you mute your microphone on the computer itself? Ah. No can hear you. Beck, you missed it while I was, before you got on, I showed pictures of our new goats. Oh, two new ones. Exciting. Born yesterday. Wow. While Fran, while, while Fran figures out his microphone. You back with us, Fran? This happened to him once before, I remember. It happened at the beginning of this meeting. There's an absolutely horrible picture. It's red because we have a heat lamp, but there's a couple of babies. Come visit. Come say hi. That's so Hold exciting. Them. They're sweet as can be. <laughs> nice. Okay. You're back. I think. I'm, yep. I think, am I back? You. Yes, you're okay. back. So, yeah, I mean, the tenant has uh, has to assert those rights. We don't, you know, initiate those rights if he's <laughs> for him. Right. No, so, no, no, yeah, I'm just saying that with there being something on the file, if the landlord, if the new owner tried to push something, even though it was the previous owner, mm -hmm. actually, I don't know how the court would rule, but my concern mm -hmm. would be on the landlord's aspect of it, the new owner's aspect of it, if, you know, it can be considering retaliation. Um, that mm -hmm. would be up to a court's decision that has nothing to do with us, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, then it gets into a similar thing like uh, what Mrs. Reed's doing to uh, Jen. Yep. This, this is, that's clearly retaliation, so I would say. <laughs> but she's done this before. Her court works works in uh, long term with tenants that are in gen situations. So um, anyway, but it will keep us posted because uh, I, I think we need to keep an eye on all, all three of these. But yep. 29 seems like it could resolve. If we can, I think it know. is. It seems like they're both trying to work together to resolve yeah. the issue. I don't think we should condemn it yet. Um, we could if we wanted to, but I don't want to displace somebody unless we absolutely have to. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, somebody would have to come in and deal with those animals and uh, the horses in particular, and that's no easy feat, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll make it stickier. Okay. So, um, yeah, keep us posted. And, you know, if we need to meet again, before the next month, we might have to, if you need anything like that. Or with white birch, again, um, no permit until things oh, yeah. are, right? that's the only thing she understands down there. No, I know, it's unfortunate. And um, yeah. uh, I'm sure I'll spend a good time, a good portion of tomorrow dealing with. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Making sure there's nobody there. I mean, she just- Yeah, it's on my list of to stop by and make sure that nobody's yeah. at white birch and- uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for doing all Thanks, that. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> you will get your exercise. So, um, great. Um, so, we can move on to uh, any ARPA updates? <clears throat> no, we, um, we have our next meeting on the 25th. Actually, I do have an update. We voted to spend mm, probably like thirty or $40,000 <clears> on stuff that the select board was asking for, um, more or less stuff for the library, um, some money for um, software for um, um, tax collecting, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It seemed, you know, kind of random, but fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm, I, oh, go ahead. No, no keep, keep going. Um, I'm, planning to talk um, later this week with Paul Newland, who um, is one of the members of the energy committee, which never meets, it turns out. <laughs> they Not last met in J January of 2020. But um, I'm, I'm hoping he can give me some numbers for, because um, I, I, what, I, what I'd like to do is propose, um, um, money for municipal solar for the which you had Fran described um particularly putting it around the um mm -hmm. uh, transfer station and stuff and I, I i liked the idea of also doing it at um the town hall sandy lane or no you mean up in uh, sandy, no, sandy lane actually i mean oh, up here yeah. would be fine but um i'm yeah up here too why not right why not mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah Sandy Lane is such a, a good location and it has a parking lot. And, you know, if they could set it up so that it, it covered the parking lot, that would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, or the roof. The roof speaks. Yeah, too. exactly. I know yeah. that it's. Um, I don't know how um, stable a roof has to be to put it on, but um, mm. yeah, it would be really neat to explore mm. that. In some ways, I like the idea of parking lot better because it serves the sort of the triple triple benefit of reducing mm -hmm. the heat sink effect of the parking lot, covering cars, um, and yeah. um, mm -hmm. being solar. So asphalt, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so anyway, I'm planning to talk to him this week and see what he knows. When is the uh, next Arbor? Oh, the 25th. Day? It's not till the tw April 25th. April we've, had 25th. A, yeah. we've had a hard time scheduling. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you get the solar stuff on their agenda because I, I when we did our first proposal, we didn't include any of that. So when you're right, so no, they, I, they see that it's already a part of our proposal or. Oh you know, yeah. yeah. No, I just I want it to be a, a very because what we've been talking about is that we want to see proposals that are really fleshed out, you know, that have details about um, cost and you know, in other words, people do the work to mm -hmm. say this is a proposal that is reasonable, um, you know, mm -hmm. especially for um, for fairness, mm -hmm. so that you know, yeah, so mm -hmm. that it, it's it's something that can be easily considered. So that's why I want to do the numbers on like how much it costs, who would we get to do it? Um, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, who, would, who, because it, what I want, I don't want to do community solar where uh, a private company mm -hmm. gets a large percentage of the electricity. I want right. it to be municipal where basically we own it and we get all of the electricity. Because yeah. there are no moving parts, you know, once you set it up, it's like you don't need maintenance or anything. So um, might as well own it. So um, that's that's what I'm going to work, what, what I'm working on. Yeah, good. Yeah. So let us know if you need any help backing. Thank or anything. You. Yep. And Paul yep. is, um, is a resource, although he hasn't been. Yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll, have really some numbers. he'll have some numbers from 2019 and he'll have some ideas. And I thought I'd reach out for, to um, co-op power. Because I think they probably can help. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or any of the installers around here can always say, "Ooh, yeah, we love to do." It. Yeah. yeah, I suppose mm -hmm. any installers are okay. Um, mm -hmm. I only hesitate because I suspect a lot of them have um, contracts with um, electric companies, you know. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, why wouldn't an installer be able to set it up? I don't think they have contracts with companies. <laughs> there well, are... ones, the ones, the one that I had for mine, you know, they hooked it up to be part of um, Eversource. No, but they don't have a choice. Yeah, Eversource has its um, territory and National Grid has its territory. So whatever town um, you're in, you're in one of those two uh, territories. So, you know, they, they have to plead or whatever, deal with that that utility company. Yeah. And, you know, I think we're all in um, Eversource and Wheatley, so. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. I mean, what I'm thinking is um, have it be, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, well, yeah, things to flesh out because, you know, they have dealt with bigger buildings and and maybe some town buildings, some of these uh, installers. Yep. You know, they, they like to tout those kind of things. But right. yeah, I mean, if you can get, you know, co you, you just muted yourself, Fran. What happened? He just muted himself. Uh, <laughs> there, I, you there you go. Back again. I'm, I have this, uh, put that thing over there. Um, anyway, no, you're absolutely right. I'll just, I'll, I'll look around for um, installers. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. I well, I, I'll call Co-op Power first because I figure they're nice and they can help me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Great. So um, yeah, I look forward to hearing what uh, that committee is up to. Yeah, because I think they've been giving away little bits of money here and there to uh, favorite projects that come on, including the water. Right? Didn't the water department get money? No, no they no. they're asking for money, but they haven't gotten any money. Oh, okay. Great. Anyway, all right. So um, 
what else do we have left? So we said we would review our recommendations for town buildings on a monthly basis. And uh, I don't know if we need to change anything, although- I don't um, think so. I don't think got, so. No. Just, I don't think there's anything to change. Um, I'm sure you guys have been hearing about the fourth booster and it sounds like it does mm -hmm. help, so. Well. No. <laughs> We, we talked a little bit about it um, before you got on. Um, I was um, speaking some to the issues of, um, you know, it's certainly for folks over 50 um, and specifically for folks with um, health issues, uh, uh, other coexisting um, it, it, um, health concerns. Um, but there's also some recommendation that, um, you know, um, what we have now and, and uh, is, is BA2. And if you get a booster now and this, you know, the computer models are talking about, you know, a wave in May and then another wave in perhaps November, uh, we might be looking at a different variant by November and that would require a different um, uh, booster potentially. Um, mm -hmm. And so if it's not something, um, my understanding is that if it's not something that um, as over 50 and with um, underlying health conditions, it may not really be something necessary. Israel came out with a report today that it had a very brief um, 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 result um, as, as helping. Um, and so it might make more sense now, but, um, but anybody who wants to get it and thinks that the fourth um, shot is, 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 you know, you're certainly mm -hmm. welcome to it, but. Because I, I actually have the article here, you might have seen it. It says um, rates of confirmed infection and severe disease were lower after the fourth dose than after only three doses. Protection against confirmed infection appeared short lived, whereas protection against severe illness did not wane during the study period. So, I mean, it's kind of like what we're noticing with the, the, um, the, the first booster, which is that yeah. it doesn't prevent um, disease, but it in fact it prevents severe disease. Severe. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the only question is just starting to, I mean, that's why they're talking about fourth uh, shot, a second booster, because the alleged um, waning um, effects of a booster. So, but it sounds like it's not really the case at this point. Well, actually, what I, I interpret this as if they're looking at people who were and weren't boosted and they show a benefit of the booster, that says that there is a waning without it. You know without, what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it does help. I mean, it, it's, I'm just looking at the conclusion. So I don't know what the numbers are because, you know, you can mm. have a benefit that's 1% and that's not yeah. necessarily a lot. So I can, right, look at right. it. but yeah, but there you go. It'll, it's something we're going to have to know about, obviously, because yeah. it's happening. Mm -hmm. happening. Yep. And you guys are medical experts. So I'm relying on you, whatever you guys think are. Did you say experts? CDC, <laughs> CDC has, uh, hasn't really pushed it lately. To, the fourth uh, shot. I can I can give you numbers right here. I just because I think it's helpful. Um, yeah. The number of cases of severe illness per hundred thousand was one point five in aggregated four dose group, three point nine in three dose group, and four point two in internal control group. Which is that's actually a lot. Uh, that is a big difference. One point five versus three point nine. Um, mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand. That's not a lot of people, because if it's per 100,000, that's like point, well, no, that's 100,000 person days, sorry. Um, so- is, is that a percent or is that actual numbers of per 100,000? That's, um, that's, that's numbers. That's numbers per 100,000 person days. Yeah, that's, that's I feel like, um, you know, what we're, the focus still is that we have a horrible, um, booster rate still in this country um, mm -hmm. and it's very frustrating and, and still a huge percentage that have gotten um, no um, vaccine at all um, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's that's what's really going to hurt us right now but uh, but we got to stay on top of and keep reading as we're doing um, about yep. what's coming next because mm -hmm. um, some computer models are showing that you know this is far from done <laughs> As, mm -hmm. as much as we're all enjoying our mask-free uh, time right now. 
Mm -hmm. I, I'm realizing that I made the mistake when I came out here, it was 60 degrees. I'm thinking <laughs> it might be somewhere around 40 now. Now, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, um, what's our, uh, we still had tobacco and nicotine vaping? On oh, our we own? fixed that. We're fine. We're fine. We're working on that. Yeah, anyway. we're done. It's good. Every, yeah, we fixed it. Are you going right. to follow up there? Um, <laughs> Beck? What's Wait, that? What's your name? Are you planning anything for schools or working with uh, Melinda? You know, I, I mean, the, the, that email that you um, sent, um, it sounded like, you know, they're just starting to get their head around the, yeah. this. I mean, the reason I brought it up isn't because I think we can fix this anytime soon. I, I brought it up because it is probably COVID level of intensity yeah. and severity. I mean, this is a serious, serious problem. And I'm not going to be able to fix it on my own. I mean, you know, it's. it's oh, come on, Beck. You can do that. It's, it's gigantic. <laughs> and, um, put it right here. Put it on those shoulders. <laughs> epidemic um, proportions. So yes. It, You're very you know, right. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, I brought it up because we need to know about this and we need, we need to have yeah. it on our agenda and like our, um, what do you call it, our radar because um, it's, <laughs> it's growing and it's, it's, nationwide and um mm -hmm. yeah it's um, a reversal of yeah exactly yeah it's a reversal of what's been going on with yeah. tobacco and it is yeah. absolutely chilling and infuriating and um mm -hmm. uh you know and i'm i i've been hearing about it from um folks at work um you know that they're very aware that it's um mm -hmm. that it's ubiquitous and COVID had a huge impact on the rates of addiction and kids, kids who want to get off it can't. And so, mm. um, and I, so I guess one thing I would say is this, um, I mean, it's great to have the, the idea of not selling um, that, you know, to, to get on the case of, of local businesses and make sure and, and that's something we can do we can be going we could do sting operations right we could be going and seeing if if kids get sold i mean maybe we even should do that <laughs> we know we already have that built in we have that, um, yeah that's existing Except the sting sting it, operation. It may need, yeah may need oh yeah we we uh, have we one, have kids that will go in and try to oh we do oh yeah we have yeah. Um, Ooh, it's who do we part have? of the the coalition of franklin hampshire county tobacco the nicotine yeah. control yeah. coalition so and that that's funded by grants Wadley's in it and they do periodic um uh sweeps not sweeps but uh uh what do they call those things well, they'll, they'll just compliance checks. they send yeah checks compliance yeah checks. compliance checks and they send in um underaged people and they say you know let them buy this and if they sell it to them they give me the receipt and it's all well, black right. and white then and we can find them and we have fine people for particularly irving it's folk. been a long time since i've heard of anybody hitting us uh hitting our, yeah. our places here in whateley yeah so, no but um well our bylaws we bylaw smoke anti-tobacco nicotine bylaws might need some updating at some point yeah, sure. because of vaping yeah mm -hmm. but but the What's um what's pretty clear is you know people can get it online, and um, mm. you can get it you know people get it mailed and so on. So mm. so I I wonder what we can do from the not non punitive approach mm. uh, to helping kids who want to quit. I mean it seems like that's what you might call the low hanging fruit. I mean we could go in and be all tough and say we're not going to let this stuff be here mm -hmm. and maybe that's reasonable too but it seems like reaching out to try to figure out how to help kids quit seems like a really nice good thing to do and um, it feels like both right it feels like both should happen oh yeah yeah, for sure. yeah. Well, well i think that's where uh, melinda is you know her, her focus is uh, when she does go into schools although apparently doesn't do talks to the kids as much anymore but right. to the staff who you know particularly the health health staff nurses stuff yeah and so i mean if i'm not mistaken fran you had had that email from her saying mm -hmm. she would be willing to go in to talk to staff 
Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she has, so I don't know if she, the last time it was, but yeah, you can follow up if you want. <laughs> well, I do. Well, I want to. I, I do want to. That would be up. yeah. So um, can I get um, some? Um, can I get any communication that you've had recently with her friend? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that'd be good. Um, and I, I guess, and I assume she needs to be paid, right? No, she's paid by um, state. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. She actually works for some state or something funded entity. So email. Okay, I'll, I'll send you that, Mike. That's good. Thank you. Um, so, um, Mark, this is dangling a last item here, hiring a health inspector. Are you getting some help with all this stuff? So I reached out to, oh, so just dial back half a second. So one of the things uh, for tobacco, they actually mm -hmm. have, not that it helps any, but they, one mm -hmm. of the things that, they, one of the signs that they have to put up is a helpline so people can call to, if they want mm -hmm. to quit. Who's they, uh, Mark? So there are required signs from the state. There's a required sign for mm -hmm. um, tobacco age, for cigars. And oh, in, in real cessation. In, yeah, in retail, so yeah. Yeah, the retail center is, and there has to be some type of um, display of cessation um, yeah. literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that kids are going to call that number, but. Right. How about <laughs> in schools? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, mm. I don't think there was. Thinking, uh, I did more of the. I did more of this when I was in Lee, and I don't. The only way, I mean, some of the schools tried to set up chapters. Um, I forget what they're called. Mm. Oh, yeah. How about if I, um, what I'd like to do is um, contact Melinda and follow up with what is being done and report back to our next meeting. Fran, mm -hmm. if you can put this on the agenda for next meeting and, uh, yeah, it's good. and I'll be able to share with people what sure. I've learned mm -hmm. about what's being done currently in the schools and, and mm -hmm. what we can do more. Cool. Mm -hmm. That'd be, that sounds really great, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. Yep. I'll, I'll do that, Mike. Get you Thank hooked you. up. And uh, she's very nice, by the way. Um, and we do keep in mind that we are part of this coalition and uh, yeah. they do um, compliance checks. They do at least twice a year, the compliance checks. And they, they, quite, yeah. twice they a year update, they do surveys. Yeah, they update, yeah. Yeah, they update um, yeah, surveillance surveys and they update, um, they help towns update their, their regs. So, you know, as needed. And education-wise education too, they have materials. Um, I maybe Fran, I, you might have mentioned this, um, but in my meetings at, in Vermont, they were talking about the surveys that are done for um, kids to find out how much they're smoking and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure Massachusetts does that too. Um, uh, yeah. But it seems but, like we should know about that. Yeah, I think that's a part of the information that Melinda cited, and she sent yeah. some uh, materials along, which you'll see, Mike. So, yeah. but Mark, concerned about your. Uh, health and the <laughs> onslaught of all these things we, we want you to do and right, getting so, us. Go ahead. So, um, I reached out to Gina by email. I didn't hear her at the back. I called last week and left a message. I still haven't heard out of the back. Interestingly, today I did get a call from a former police officer uh, with a master's in criminal justice that was moving out east or no, west, sorry, out west. Mm -hmm. He's actually going to be moving to Williamstown. So I don't know that that won't be too far, but um, mm -hmm. it was something that he was potentially interested in. So he's going to email me his resume. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much the only that. And, you know. But yeah, Gina is not responding. Is there something? Yeah, I haven't on? heard it at the back. I left a message on her phone and I had emailed her and I still haven't heard back. You want to have Donna pursue it because she was the initial contact. Maybe that'll yeah. get get to her. That you guys, you're gonna soon be uh, just with these housing cases alone. Yeah, no, they're taking up all... a lot of time. I mean, so far, mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the online permitting, we've had foothill wide. We have done 21 Title Fives. We have scheduled 21 already. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the beginning of the season. So. Yeah, that, that's without, yeah, I haven't done any of the food inspections, et cetera, so. Yeah. No. Good. Well, uh, okay. I would say have, have Donna give her a buzz. If you want me to ask Donna to call her and see. No, I can give Donna a call tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I know her too, but I, it's been a while. So anyway, better, better she does. 
Okay, yeah, I don't have anything else. Man. How about you guys? It's May 3rd would be our next meeting, not the 5th. 5th. I had that wrong. So, okay. Um, and we still like this time? Probably yeah, it's a good time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, when is the next um, Foothills meeting? <laughs> I keep missing them. I we have one. Friday frame. Or Mark. We, we don't have one scheduled because uh, oh. we, we were going to wait till what were we were waiting for. Or, something oh to hear about um the personnel policy which we have now heard about and also uh redoing the inspection health inspector job description and um speaking with gina right, with gina to schedule an interview so we would have some something to talk about we have plenty to talk about but i won't be here this friday so it ain't gonna happen friday <laughs> Okay. Unless somebody else wants to take over, uh, I don't be happy to have somebody else go be the host. But um, but next week we should probably meet, don't you think, Mark? Are you oh, talking no. with Tom? Um, oh, next week, the Foothills, you mean? Foothills, yeah, Foothills. Becky. Sorry, yeah, Foothills. So Becky knows. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, I just... I, I, my the the um invitations keep going into my spam box and i don't mm. know let's make sure mm. we get it to everybody i gotta get out of this cold guys i'm freezing all right yeah well, okay. everybody go milk those goats <laughs> thank you take care everybody congratulations on the baby